Welcome to Zekeworks. Today we're going to look at the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero. And if we compare this to a Raspberry Pi A Plus, quite a bit smaller. Or maybe a uh, B Plus version 1 B plus. That's a lot smaller. Let's all them together. So the first thing I want to do is put some headers on here. What the Raspberry Pi Zero budget pack from Adafruit comes with. An on the go adapter. This is to convert the micro USB to a full size USB. It's a power adapter. This one is one amp. And SD card. This is a micro SD card with an adapter. I've already put Raspbian on here with uh, Jesse. Go ahead and put the uh, Wi-Fi adapter in there. Wi-Fi adapter didn't come with it. I already had it. All right, let's get started. Also, there's the the um, HDMI adapter, full size HDMI. Now the header you get with this is uh, just straight pins. I'm not going to use that though. I'm going to use a right angle header. You'll find out why later. All right, let's get the soldering iron turned on. Actually, I guess going to go this way around. These are fun to put on. There we go. Let's just do the first one. I'm sure I got that lined up right. Not too bad. And let's do the rest of them. All right. Now what I'd like to do is see how much power this uses. I've already installed the uh, Operating system, Raspbian and Jesse on the micro SD card here. This is a class 10 SD card from SanDisk. This is what uh, Edifords currently shipping with their budget pack. Get that put in there. On the Pi Zero, that's not a, uh, it's not spring loaded on the SD card. I like that because I end up constantly accidentally pushing these in and out when I'm messing with these other Raspberry Pis. It's the same thing on the uh, A Plus, like the B Plus. It's 
spring loaded. I like that a lot better. All right, let's power it on. Well, I'll tell you what, first thing I want to do before I power it on, I have a protector case from Adafruit. I'm going to put that on there. All right, for the protector, let's find the bottom piece. And as far as getting it lined up right, there's a bit of cut out there next to the, where the GPIO would be. That goes where you see the four pins right below the GPIO. This is the bottom piece, the uh, larger piece is. There are two size screws. There's a larger screw and then there's a smaller screw. The larger screw goes in the front where the USB is. Same on the other side. The short ones go in the back. Now we can put the nuts on the bolts. Screw them on. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them all on and then tighten them down. Yes, you're gonna go ahead and put all four on. You'll see the top in a second. You should have two nuts left after this. All right, I'm gonna tighten them down. Find a screwdriver. You don't need to be super tight unless you're going to put this on board a satellite. Then I would suggest tighten them down as tight as you can without cracking the acrylic. I don't quite have enough money to get one up in space yet, so I'm not gonna tighten down that much. All right, top side. All right. Get this lined up. You can see there's another notch right there where the four pins would go. And there's a little curve where the SD card would be. So put that down on the uh, two front bolts and put the remaining nuts on. And there we go. There's the protective case for Metafruit. Looks kind of nice. Pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at how much power this is gonna draw. Now my hopes are that it's gonna be less than the Raspberry Pi A+, which is pretty low on power. Uh, but uh, well let's find out I've already got everything set up and I don't really need it because I've got a power supply but just for you I've got the multimeter set up so you can see what what's going on all right well I've got the Pi plugged in and just make sure you plug it in the right way around uh, the pin number one is the square shaped pin where you look where you were soldering and just make sure you put that on the right side 
when you plug it in. I didn't the first time, so it got kind of hot. It was drawing five amps and it shut off on me. Well, well it never came on. Uh, at that point, I had to wait a few minutes before it would work again, but everything seems to be fine. I plugged it back into a monitor just to make sure it's okay. So it, it boots up, it uh, does not go into X. It stays in console. It doesn't go any further than that, so hopefully it's not gonna use too much power. Let's turn the power supply on. See what happens. Yeah. Get the multimeter on. Well, that's a lot more than I was expecting. Wow, 400. 326, 325. It's quite a bit of power. I've actually got this uh, set up at 700 megahertz, but they say that these are overclocked slightly, so they should be faster than the B plus and the A plus by a little bit, but uh, maybe that's why it's drawing so much power. That's, a, that's twice as much as I was expecting. I'm not entirely sure why. We're running at 5.1 volts right now. We got 5.4 volts and we're drawing about 300 milliamps. Well, that's disappointing. Let's see what the uh, Raspberry Pi A Plus will draw. I'm gonna unplug this and give it a try. Now, I can't shut the Pi down, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to do this the hard way. I shut off the power supply so I don't electrocute myself. All right, I've got a little ribbon cable so I can hook up the A Plus. That's why I use the uh, right angle headers on the Pi Zero. Allowed me to plug it right in. All right, this is the Raspberry Pi A Plus. Power back in. Turn the power supply back on. Let's see what we get. Well, that's much better. At I'm really disappointed by the Zero. It uses twice as much power as the A+. It's quite a bit smaller. It has the same chip. Well, that's not bad. 100 milliamps. Just under 100 milliamps. So what does the B plus version one draw? Well, let's just hook it up and find out just to compare with. All right. I don't have anything plugged up to these. It's like there was no, nothing plugged up to the USB on the Pi Zero. There was no HDMI. Still drew that much power. All right, let's try to be plus. Two twenty. That's still less than the Pi Zero. That's gonna be just over 200 milliamps. That is very disappointing. Well, there you go. If you want something that's going to use a lot of power and very small and very cheap, Pi Zero. Maybe I can figure something out to make that use half the power. I'll have to look that up later. Alright, well that's it for the Pi Zero. 
uh, very disappointing but uh, maybe there's something wrong with this one I am getting a few more of these that I can test with later on and I can find out if maybe this one's just effective I don't know but uh, there you have it Pi Zero